talk today about camera trapping and uh, what makes a good camera trap and what you're going to be looking for. So camera trapping is the use of a camera, generally one with a sensor. So we generally set these up somewhere in the forest or in the bush, aimed at particular areas, whether it be a tree hollow or a water course or along a pathway that's very well traveled. We set these up and they can be left out for several days or even weeks and they capture images that are triggered by the motion sensor within the camera. Now, we're looking today at a tree hollow here, which is a perfect example of where we'd be, we'd be setting up a camera. We don't know if there's anything in this tree hollow, but we want to capture anything coming and going. We'd probably be strapping a camera to this branch here and having a look at it. The things we want to make sure we're going to get with this is we want to have a good focal distance. We want to make sure that we're going to capture any animal that's coming and going and not be too fuzzy. And we want to capture the full animal. So uh, when we're looking at different pictures, you can either set your cameras, often they can do both video and photos. So we prefer to be using the photos. Videos can take up quite a lot of space. And if you've just got something moving, that's a, a twig uh, or a branch, it's a really windy day, you can actually capture quite a lot of footage that is not gonna be very helpful to what you need. So for an example like this, we're gonna aim at the tree hollow, we're gonna strap our camera to this tree here and uh, see what we can get. So here we have a typical camera trap. This is one of the cheaper models, it's readily available. This is the camera here, these are the infrared, these are the sensors. Off, opens up like this. This one has a screen so that you can view the pictures and these are the settings and that's where you view your settings as well. Behind this are all the batteries. Close it up like this and it clamps shut. This one is a low glow as opposed to a no glow. Your preference is a, a no glow. The animals can still sense uh, when there's, when you're not using the low glow. No glow is much more preferential. This one here is a much more expensive model. It more importantly has a security setting so that you can strap a security wrap around whatever you've strapped it to so that no one can steal it. This is your camera, your infrared and your sensors. Opens up like this. It has no screen so you can't view the pictures which means you need to have a tablet or a computer out with you to view them. Your settings are in here and here are your batteries. Closes up like this and that's how it straps onto the tree with a strap like this. Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna set up this camera to look at this hollow over here. Handing that around the back there. Okay. <laughs> How's that? Excellent. All right, we've got that viewing there. So now we've got our camera trap strapped to the tree. We've got it facing our hollow. We wanna make sure that we've actually got it photographing the bit that we wanna photograph. Put it to on. It's just gonna do its thing for a second. We're gonna arm the camera. Close it. Wait for it to arm itself. And then we're gonna take a test picture to make sure that it's facing exactly where we want it to face. Should be armed by now. So we might just wave in front of it. Open it up again. Press okay. Turn it off. And we'll remove our card and check and see what image we've got. So we've just checked our picture. It's not quite aiming where we want it to aim. We're gonna put our SD card back in. We're gonna adjust the camera a little bit and we're gonna try again. Just close it up. We'll move it up a little bit. Hopefully that's aiming better. And we're gonna do the same thing again, opening it up, turning it on and arming the camera. You keep doing this and checking your SD card and you've got it in the right spot. Then you secure the strap tighter 
and hopefully it'll stay in the same spot so that you can keep your camera out for several days or weeks. All right, this is a wireless inspection camera. It's often used for drains and sewers, but today we're going to use it to check a tree hollow. It's got a camera on the end. This one actually has an extension that goes several meters. It's got a screen at the front. We can actually see what's going on. This one, you can actually take the screen off and view while you've got this down the hole. So uh, now we're just going to see what's in the hollow. It's actually got a light on the end of it, so it's going to be able to light up so that the camera can pick up what's going on. We can't see anyone in there. This is also recording video so that we can view it back later just in case we do capture anything. So here we have a tree hollow. You can see around here, it's quite worn. However, lower down there's still bark that can slough off. This means that something has been rubbing off any of this loose bark around this hollow which means it's likely that someone's been using it recently or is still using it now. You can see inside as well, there's scratches inside, which means someone may have been doing a few renovations. So now we're gonna put the inspection camera down and see if we can see anyone. It's quite dark in there. Looks like there might be a nest of some sort in there. There's some leaves. There's definitely leaves in there. Someone's been putting leaves in. We don't know if there's anyone home. So you might set up a camera trap to watch this tree hollow instead. So we're currently on a thoroughfare for wildlife movement and a bit of a watercourse as well and we've found some scats down here we have some little scats they're little hard oval shaped we're not exactly sure what species they belong to but we're going to set up a camera along this line this is a perfect spot to target to start seeing who's moving up and down these tracks